Hi, Peter. All right. I have been servicing this home for, you know, COVID throws a lot of things off. That was three years that just wiped off the face of the earth. It's disgusting. It's a waste of time. I've been coming here probably for about eight, seven, eight years. Okay. And when the homeowner first got this house, there wasn't a ceiling like it is here now. There wasn't a couch. There wasn't a TV on the wall. And there sure wasn't. A boiler and a water heater and a, con and a closet, a confined space. Customers complained it's 57 degrees outside. Oh, no, it's 58 now. See that? 58. Quarter to 8 in the morning. TGIF, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, look, I even have... Look at that, 2015. Look at that. You see? You guys think I exaggerate sometimes, but on December 10th, 2015, I did a combustion analysis. With the Testo 320, right after. You know what? That's about the same time, the same year, that I learned from Steve Lav. You know, he's the world's greatest YouTube plumber, in my opinion, right? Good enough for his neighborhood, not for mine. But I learned from the great Steve Lav about the Testo 320, right around that time. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're assigned to renovate your basement and um, you think that building out a closet around your heating equipment and your domestic water heating equipment is a good idea, no bueno. Here's an easy way to think about that. We have a hundred and, let's say 140,000 BTU gas-fired boiler. Steam doesn't matter right now. You got a 40,000 BTU gas-fired domestic water heater. Let's set, that's 180,000 BTUs. Let's just say, let's just say half, which is 90,000 BTUs, right? Mm -hmm. This is not really the exact science, but imagine 90,000 candles burning at the same time inside this closet. Forget about the heat. What do you think is gonna happen to those candles? 90,000 candles, I don't even think 90,000 candles could fit in this closet. The point I'm trying to make, ladies and gentlemen, that these, this equipment needs combustion air. You, you know, in order for flame to burn, you need air. The easiest thing to do here is remove the door. Bring in makeup air by means of a fan of a can, by field systems, field controls, sorry. Put louver door in maybe, as long as the basement is large enough, which it is because it was unfinished at one point. But... Let's get on with All this. right, customers complain that they put in this Nest thermostat that says there's no power. Okay. Now, I'm not a fan of those things right there. Um, let's see if we can find... Ah, here we go. There's our thermostat. Okay, going into this box. Okay, let's get a Phillips screwdriver and let's take off this cover. So, here is going to be our TT, or our R, H, and W, from the, uh, the, going to the thermostat, which is here, going to the boiler. And, um, again, your local jurisdiction may be different, but in our local jurisdiction, we cannot have low voltage and line voltage in the same box like this. Not allowed. Not like this. You know, things like that, it's part of the boiler wiring. It's engineered for that, mm -hmm. right? But doing field connections like this, not permissible. So let's bypass the thermostat. Let's confirm that our thermostat wire is the problem or not. So let's take these two wire nuts, put them right down there. And I'm gonna take these two wires and touch them together. And nothing happens. Absolutely nothing happens. So, we, could, we know we have 24 volts because that green light is on right there. Let's see if we have a vent. Oh, look at this. Someone got a little creative here. And it probably was me. This is called the... Oh, it's your service spill switch. Spill switch? Uh, 
Um, Correct. Yeah, I was, okay, I was okay. gonna. Yeah. <laughs> Normally, if you push this in and hear a little click, it means it reset. Let's get the voltmeter and let's manually test that for continuity. A great question, Peter. So you asked me, what would holding these two wires together do? It would close the circuit, right? The thermostat, which is here, right, is the the rest of the switch, right? This is R and this is W, right? So if I take R and I touch W with it, I close the circuit. Right, which should turn the boiler on because now the thermostat is telling it to turn on. But the thermostat's not here. My fingers are taking the two wires together. Does that make sense? Or I need to? It, no, that does. I was just over okay. it. Okay. Okay, no problem. We usually do it at the thermostat. Yeah, so but I, I like to, I like to, if there's a means where I can, if, instead of start taking things apart at the boiler, if there's a means for me to bypass thermostat and thermostat wiring mm -hmm. right at the boiler, I like to do that first. With a steam boiler, it's, you usually have to go into there. With an atmospheric gas fire boiler, like a hydronic boiler, there's usually the, the, the fan center relay in here with the, with the relay and the transformer built onto it. You could take the R and the W wire mm -hmm. right then at the two black wires that come out of, the, out of the relay and do that there. Even if there was zone valves here, I mean, uh, zone relay, whatever, mm -hmm. you could always go right there and bypass everything else. So by touching these two together, right, Let's actually get a wire nut because it's going to help us troubleshoot. And let's twist those two wires together. This is actually, I think, going to be quite a learning experience. Not only for you, Peter, but also hopefully for the YouTube community. All right. So this is our blocked vent switch, also known as a spill switch. We have our multimeter set to read uh, continuity or resistance. We're going to touch the two leads together to confirm that, they're con that our leads are connected and the multimeter is working. Let's take one to one uh, terminal, one to the other, and let's see if we have continuity there. Perfect, okay, so now we've proven that there's continuity on the spill switch. Before I start checking everything else out, take a look at our vent damper. It is closed. Let's see, I just gently gave it a little nudge Looks like our vent damper is not doing anything, anything either. Oh, oh there it goes. Would you look at that? It appears as though we had a stuck vent damper. But there it goes again. Interesting. It completed a full rotation and then went back again. Let's put this into manual mode. Of course, now it's not gonna cooperate. Hear that clicking? Mm -hmm. That's our end switch. See? Right now, end switch is closed. It's like the light switch. Light switch is, cl is on, light switch is off. Hmm. Sorry. Automatic is towards me. Manuals towards the other way. Okay, it's closed. Let's carry on. 
let's check our pressure troll. All right, we're going through our safety components. We need a flat screwdriver. And we're going to take off that screw. All right, remove the front cover. We're going to take off one lead. Now let's check for continuity between there and there. That's good too. We're good. Well, let's reconnect this and then go to the next. Next we are in the boiler vestibule. <clears throat> that thing, that white thing with the black and the red wire, that is called a... <coughs> Very good, let's remove those two wires and check for continuity across that. Mm, there's continuity there as well. Good. Peter, mm -hmm. um, I was just saying, let's take that off. Let's see if we have a pilot. And as I'm saying that, right? As I'm saying that, I'm looking at our gas valve and I see it set the pilot. <laughs> this is a perfect example a perfect example <clears throat> you never overlook the obvious mm -hmm. right never ever ever overlook the obvious we have a gas valve honeywell right that's set to pilot and we're troubleshooting why a boiler's not firing granted we have no pilot right now and i should have checked that but there's certain things i took for granted right I took things for granted. Why? We all make mistakes. All right? And this is kind of like the first real service call, heating service call of the 2023-2024 heating season. That's right. It's 57 degrees out this morning when I woke up. I actually slept with the sliding door open last night. The air conditioning set for, of course, is 60, 66 degrees. Mm -hmm. And it was on when I actually woke up this morning and it was 66 degrees in the room. But it was a night. Well, you see, it was in the winter. The winter, I had the radiant heat on. It's set to 64, and it's right around 62 degrees. I keep the, 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 the I have a second floor like balcony patio or for a master suite, and I keep the door open about eight inches, sliding uh, glass door. So the radiant heat is on. It's not like, you know, being under the covers with the doggies. True. Forget about the wife, you know. She's on the other side because you have two full size beds pushed together because, you know, the Orthodox Jews do it that way. It's never a part, though. Um, and it's nothing like waking up under the covers. Nice, warm, fluffy companions with you. Stoli. Under the nice Stoli and Gigi. Gigi. All right, let's relight this pilot. Okay. Let me turn the flash off. Our flash is off. Peter is pu pushing down on the black... Is it black in this case? Oh, red. red. <laughs> on the red plunger, the dial is on the gas valve is set to pilot. And we're pushing down on that, right? We are pushing open or holding open the pilot side of the gas valve, allowing gas to flow through the pilot valve mm -hmm. into the pilot tube and into the pilot burner, right? Once the tip of the thermal couple, which is sitting in that blue pilot flame, right? Those two uh, bisimilar bi bi metals heat up. They're going to send a small millivolt charge to the gas valve. And that millivolt charge is going to hold, hold open the magnet, which we're pushing down, which is loaded with a spring, and going to keep the pilot on. So if you hold that down for about a minute and let go, right about now, it went out. Oh, uh -oh. So let's try that one more time. And this time we'll do it for a little bit longer. Okay. We're also going to make sure that our pilot flame is actually sitting, sorry, the thermocouple tip is actually sitting in the pile of flame, and it is. We have a nice flame there. It's a very, very nice flame. But we may be in need of a thermocouple and or a new gas valve. <coughs> All right, it went out again. All right, Peter, what I'd like you to do now, you have a two two part mission. Number one, you're going to go to the truck and grab a Honeywell 36-inch thermocouple, right? Number two, on the way out the house, up the stairs, you're going to pass by the homeowner. You're going to tell her a couple things. Number one, it appears you have a couple issues going on right now, which it is true, right? Right now, there's no pilot on the boiler. Uh, we tried relighting it, and it's not relighting. We're going to try changing the part that senses that pilot flame, which should correct it. If it doesn't, then we'll have another conversation. 
Uh, and then we'll figure out if the thermostat is, which is right now bypassed, is the thermostat also an issue? So we're doing that right now, and we'll let you know what happens. You got that? I think so. Okay. I have faith in you. Let the faith be with you. All right, Peter. I'm going to give you a little a little trick. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, loose, loosen up this first. That's the thermal couple going into the gas valve. Now, without, maybe you can squeeze in there, remove a few of the burners, mm -hmm. but try to just use your fingers to just to see if you take out the thermocouple from the bottom of it. And it's okay if you can, you know, if you take the burner out a little bit and just wiggle it around a little bit, but maybe, sometimes you get lucky. Mm -hmm. You know, some of those um, pilot burner assemblies, like on an HB Smith, oh, they suck. HP Smith. Yeah, and if you don't 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 be a bashful, you could also pull the, the pilot burner out a little bit as well. Our our uh, pilot burner tubing and our thermal couples are quite flexible. And if you can, great. If not, then you got to take it out. Oh, I think it broke it. Like broke. Uh, broke what? No, not broke it, but like. Broke it free. Yeah. Okay. Loosened it. Loosened it. Breaking something while you're working on it is not a good thing. <laughs> Again, if this works for you, great. If not, no biggie. Then don't be scared. Take it out if you want. Is that... No, the power's off to the uh, okay. to the boiler. All right. Now, my gut feeling is that this may, this may or may not work, replacing the thermocouple, only because, you know, the amount of rusty water that I'm seeing around the gas valve, yeah. uh, it, it seems like something else is also going on here. You know, there's a lot of issues. We have the corrosion and rust on the bottom of our sight glass assembly, rust around the bottom, even though there's um, the relief valve on the other side. Did I even verify this one there? Yeah, there is right there. Let's double check our PSI of our relief valve. And this is going to say Zoom in, baby. That is going to say 15 PSI. And we have a drip leg on it as well. Okay. <laughs> You're cute. You're sizing up the old, <laughs> the old uh, thermocouple against the new one. Let's right? thread that in first. No, thread this into oh. the pilot burner. And then you'll slide in. No, no, no thread it in first. Work easier. Just pull that out. All right. just put this thread, in? no, thread this into oh, the gotcha, bottom of the gotcha, pilot gotcha, burner. Gotcha, gotcha. Sorry, guys, I can't get an angle. It's okay. Okay. Once that's snug, mm -hmm. now shoving the thermal couple into that piece that you just threaded in. Push. 
Yep, push it in. <clears throat> All the way in. Okay, she's in. Hmm? She's in. Okay, and the tip is sitting. Good. Okay. So reinstall that pilot burner. I mean that that um that main burner tube. could reattach your thermocouple to the gas valve and then relight the pilot. Okay. All right, let's try relighting the pilot. No, you can leave that off if you want. We don't need power to relight the pilot. Flame arm looks stronger. Flame looks stronger? Yeah. And listen, the, um, the boiler has been subject to construction in this basement. We don't know when that occurred. Uh, it needs a tune-up, needs some maintenance uh, by shaking around that, that pilot. Uh, that main burner with with the pilot burner assembly attached to it any debris in there you know probably uh got shifted moved around think about it. it's a very small pinhole yeah. on an orifice sitting inside which is letting the gas flow for that small pilot flame very very small like size of a hair a little bit bigger but all right uh let's see what happens you let it go oh, try again yeah my suspicions may be correct we may be in need of a new gas valve. I guess we'll soon find out. Here's a little trick. Take this flashlight, mm -hmm. bang that pilot hood. Just here? Just bang it. See if there's any more debris in there. We do have a nice flame, but if you know if we could just shake that around a little bit, you'll see that it's affecting the flame. Maybe, just maybe. Can you see the tip of the thermocouple clearly in the pilot flame? Yeah. Okay. So we'll hold that down for another 20 seconds, you know, total of a minute, and we'll see what happens. All right, relighting the pilot didn't work. So I went to the truck, grabbed the Honeywell stool valve standing pilot, half inch in, half inch out. All right, turn the gas off. Let's get showing All up. right, let's start by cracking this union. Never ceases to amaze me how people shove in so much stuff around the boiler. Like I think it's all right. Let's see if you can crack that without holding them back. Oh yeah, get that money. Okay. Now, unfortunately, now we have to take off of this nipple and this nipple because that valve's in the way. Oh, yeah. Yep. You may need to use a yeah large channel lock, or we have a, do we have a, a, a small ten inch wrench in the tool bag. No. All right. Let's take out that nipple coming out of the gas valve. Other way, with the wrench. Lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. You may or may not have to hold back on the gas valve with a wrench.
tight spot. The valve is loose. There you go. That valve needs to be replaced too. We should change that. Okay. Put that up to the side. Let's remove the thermal couple and the pilot tubing from the gas valve. gas valve sometimes it's all about the leverage all right so now we are holding back on the pipe with a, a pair of channel locks and peter's going to use his muscles hopefully he had his wheaties this morning it looks like it's slowly going it's slowly going it's going oh yeah peter oh it's different sitting Man, I think it's getting the best of you, huh? Remember, treat it like it was that low water cutoff probe you from the other day. This possession sucks. Yeah. Well, now that it's loose, you may be able to knot the whole back at the same time, but let's see. You, you manhandle both your hands. Oh, come on, Peter. I got faith in you. Manhandle it. Just move it a bit. Really? Well, you can't manhandle it? Wow. I'm impressed. I'm impressed by that gas valve. Wow. That gas valve is getting the best of you. I can't believe it. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> you know what? There are so many people watching this right now. Well, not right now, but watching this. And they've all experienced the same exact thing that you are right now. Gas valves suck. Yeah, they do. They should make a gas valve wrench. They should. I'm surprised those people at Pipe Vice haven't made one yet. Maybe they have. We're just missing out. Yeah, maybe. Okay. There it is. Okay. So now that those threads look excellent, by the way. Let's get a little pipe dope on there and throw the thread on the new. Valve. All right. So here is our new Honeywell Residio, the VR 8200A. 2132. This is a two stage or dual valve. We have a half inch on both sides. Biggest thing to keep in mind is direction of flow. Okay, that arrow. So I'll hand that to Peter and let's see what arrow direction that should be pointing towards. Arrows on the bottom. Which, where should it be pointing towards? Okay, very good. All right. Peter's got some pipe dope on our outlet side of the gas valve pipe threads. He is securing the new gas valve. And he'll use the wrench to make that nice and tight. One thing to keep in mind, mm -hmm. right? That, that the metal, it's kind of soft, yeah. right? You want to make sure that whatever you're using to tighten that up, mm -hmm. that you don't damage the threads of the two main things that we need to use on top of that valve, which is the pilot outlet, mm -hmm. right, and the thermocouple connection. All right, so go ahead and tighten it, but just keep that in mind. We don't want to you know, uh, mess up those threads. All right, I'm just gonna give it a little extra on this thing. How's that feel? Nice and snug? Yep. Excellent. Okay, let's rebuild the rest of the gas piping to connect the union 
and the drip leg and the T to the valve. Peter's now holding back with the wrench on the gas valve. And he's gonna use our other channel lock to tighten up the nipple going into the valve. Looks about right. Good. All right. I'll take the nipple. Now, in some jurisdictions, you're not allowed to reuse that piping once it's removed. Um, listen, if the piping looks questionable, um, by all means, replace it. I don't see anything wrong. It just got some. It's just got some age on it. And of course, after we're done, we'll leak detect everything with the soapy water and or the combustible leak detector that we have. Okay, make sure that's nice and snug. And snug is not gonna be hand tight, it's gonna be wrench tight. Lefty, oh, okay, holding back, very good. Good approach there, Peter. I was going with the one wrench approach, but go ahead, get that money. Tighten her up. Now let's do the top of the T and the union. Connect our union. Oh, yeah. I like to crack it as I'm tightening it to get any extra air out of there quicker. You can smell a little bit of gas already. Yeah. Racing against the clock. Good. Confident? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Now, one thing before we can start connecting everything to our gas valve, let's turn it to pilot and let's accelerate the amount of air we push out of there. Smell gas? You can hear the difference. So there's already you hear the air pushed yeah. out followed by the gas. Let's reconnect our Gas is on that side. Let's reconnect our pilot tubing to the right side of the valve and our thermal couple. And these, these threads should go on easy for almost the entirety of threading it on. If it's difficult to catch or you, you feel you need a wrench to catch your threads and tighten it up, you're not doing it right. And you are, I wouldn't say potentially, but you will be cross-threading it. Right. It's very it's soft metal. It's not nothing crazy. Good. Alright, the thermal couple is attached. Let's follow up by our pilot tubing. Okay, let's relight the pilot. Peter is pushing in on the plunger on the gas valve. Now you don't worry. That's enough to, to spark it. As long as you can get that in there. Got to wait for the gas to flow out of the pilot tubing. There you go. 
and let's hold that down. While we're waiting for this to uh, generate enough electric millivolts to hold down the magnet on the pilot valve inside the gas valve, some of you may be asking, Mikey Pipes, why didn't you install an electronic ignition system here? For example, the Honeywell retrofit kit. Well, I'm a fan of standing pilot. When that pilot goes out, it's usually a cheap thermocouple. Enough said. All right, Peter, let's see what happens. And voila, we have a pilot standing right there and we're not holding it in. Okay, now let's reconnect, uh, attach our combustion chamber uh, front panel, reconnect the wiring to our rollout switch and get the show on the road. Okay, and I connected the wires to the gas valve. Let's flip that switch on and see what happens. Ready? Put the gas valve on. Yes. Okay, here we go. Thermostat has still jumped out. Our low at a cutoff went through the sequence. <sighs> I suspect something with this vent damper. system has been running for about eh, five seven minutes tightened up the switch put back our transformer put back our plate there's the hole that was drilled years ago eight plus years ago i have a funny suspicion that this draft hood was altered and it says here this draft hood must be installed without alteration required clearance between bottom of skirt and the top of jacket i got a feeling someone cut this down it's my gut feeling peter's getting the testo 320 combustion analyzer set up and let's test combustion because we just changed the valve all right peter has the probe of the tip of the probe Installed halfway in the flue pipe. Best way is to stick it all the way in, pull it back a little bit so you know what halfway is. We have an atmospheric fired gas boiler, steam boiler here. We should see stack temperatures somewhere in the low 400 degrees. Uh, in case you're wondering what these numbers should ideally be, if you look in the description box down below, I'll put the numbers there. Still heating up. All right, seven percent O2. Our CO2 is off the screen. Let's go down a little bit. Seven point eight five. And in case you guys are a little lazy, there are the numbers. Stack temperature uh, for an atmospheric gas combustion boiler. Three twenty five five hundred. O2 four to nine percent. CO2 six and a half to eight. And very most importantly, CO, less than 50 parts per million. So we're still warming up. Our stack temperature is slowly climbing. It's a steamer, so expect that to be in the, you know, almost 400 or slightly over 400 degrees. O2 is sitting at 7%. Very, very nice. I'm happy with that. Gross efficiency of 83.2. And we have 10 parts per million of carbon monoxide, 7.85 CO2. Very nice. I'm quite confident with these numbers. Let's hit that clipboard button and let's continue with draft. 
All right, we have zeroed it out. It took 11 seconds for it to reset. And we're reinstalling our probe into the same hole or same location that the combustion results were taken, okay? This is how I was taught. Some of you believe, or some of you had commented on a previous video that it needs to be after the diverter. I was taught that it needs to be before the diverter. Right now, we are hovering between point 004, which is four thousandths negative pressure. And as it heats up, it will probably stay there. Now we're, 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 we're rising in that eight thousandths. And once that stabilizes, we'll clipboard that. All right. Updated the service tag. 91523 gas valve and T-couple. Make sure our valve tags are on. And we took the combustion test results along with the one that was there and the one that was here. Added to this little baggie, right? That way you can put more future results in there. And look, we've been there quite a number of times. One, two, three. Yeah, three times. Three combustion results. I got these from Uline. You know, uh, they're packing slip uh, baggies. Adhesive on one side and you don't take this top off so you can put more of them in every year. And if you're interested in getting these uh, these service tags, uh, my printer is called Command Printing. They're in Hopog, New York. Hopog is spelled H-A-U-P-P-A-U-G-E. They do this. They do my stickers, you know, those red service switch stickers that I put on. They do those as well. If you're interested in this, tell them Pipe Doctor sent you. Um, there's no commission to me or referral, but um, there's a nice guy. <laughs>